everyone, it is Kelly Kahoot with Honeybee Stamps and I'm so glad that you're joining me and Scrapbook and Cards today and this awesome World Card Making Day celebration. One of my favorite techniques is ink blending, whether that is on little die cuts, whether that is a background with our stencils. And so today I'm gonna to do something a little different. I'm gonna take a cover plate die that was designed to create a scene for some of our smaller little die cuts. But why can't we make a card with a cover plate die and some coordinating stencils, not add all those extra little pieces, just add a beautiful sentiment and then have a beautiful beautiful finish card. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you stick around and watch me make an inky mess. Okay, so this is the card that I'm going to create today with our Farmhouse Fields die. It's a cover plate die. It adds the impression all into that paper and then I'll use the coordinating stencils to easily color this in. Now this die and the stencils are designed to make a farm scene to coordinate with our little farm dies. So the on the farm dies, but why not make a beautiful scene and just create a card with that beautiful kind of country farm scene that we don't necessarily need to use all of the little dies. So that's what I'm gonna do today is ink blend just a beautiful farmy scene and add a pretty sentiment. So I've used that cover plate die and cut uh, just white paper. And I like to leave the edges around that because it just helps me to um, make more of an inky mess. And I'll take that little uh, insert up there at the top, you know, where our clouds will go. I'll, I'll take that off later on. Now here are the oxide inks that I have pulled out to use. I'm gonna make my trees and bushes and shrubbery and things like that kind of fall colored. And so I've pulled out lots of my favorite greens and oranges and yellows. Okay, so I've got my waffle flower stencil mat here and I'm gonna use one of those really cool grip mats underneath my paper and my stencils. And that just kind of helps hold everything into place. So I have zoomed in here and you can really see all of that great embossed detail that that cover plate die is going to give you. And I'm now going to use my stencils. Now you could easily use a pixie spray or some washi tape or something like that to hold the stencils down. But I personally love um, these awesome clear stencils that I can ink on and I can lift up and shift, shift around, add more color here and there so I do not tape or pixie spray my stencils down. This is my brush that has gathered twigs on it and you'll notice that I'm going in the direction of that opening for what is going to look like a plowed field on the farm. And so you can see I'm shifting that around. I can add deeper color in here and there just by either adding more ink or adding more pressure onto the bristles of my blending brush. You can see several times I will take the stencil up, I will shift it around, add ink here and there. And I that's why I don't tape it down or I don't spray, use a, a low tack spray to um, hold those down. Okay, now I am holding up the stencil that is the opening for the trunk and the limbs of the tree. And I'm gonna use the same color so I have my gathered twigs brush in my hand and you'll notice again that I'm going in the direction of the branches and then just brushing gently in there. I'll work my way down the trunk of the tree and in areas that I want to add more color, I'll kind of swirl that brush around to get it into the nooks and crannies of that stencil. I can pull that up and then the trunk and the limbs are all good to go. Now, again, as I mentioned before, I love to pick up my stencils and then lay them back down where I want to add more color. So I picked it up, kind of took a look around, where do I want to make the shading darker? You can see I really twist and turn the head of my brush to get those bristles way down deep in there. 
Next, I'm going to do the field that is kind of tucked back in behind that tree and then just ahead of the trees in the tree line that back there. Now this is fossilized amber. I'm taking that brush and going over the top. And again, I love to lift up these stencils, see what that field is looking like. And then I'll place everything back in and add, you know, darker shading where I want it. I'll shift it around and kind of have that blend into the next field. But easy peasy, that's what I love about our uh, stencils, one, they're really nice and clear, and then two, they have the etched lines in them. So it makes it super easy for me to pick those up, readjust, see where I want to add more color, and then place that back down again. Next, I'm going to do the field that is at the bottom of the scene, and I am going to add bundled sage. I'm taking my time to get everything lined up. And then I always like to start my brush where I want to add more color. So for this section, I'm gonna add darker shading up next to the gathered twigs field and then the yellow there. And so I am dragging from the plastic part of that stencil and then onto the paper because that's where it's going to add more pigment and more ink onto the paper and then I can just kind of fade that out as I move down. Now you'll see here in just a second I'm going to take the stencil up all together and I can kind of blend that green ink down onto the bottom of that sheet of paper. Now, you'll notice that that paper is just like a scratch or a scrap piece of paper. It is not even cut in a nice square because I'm going to trim that down later on when I go to create the card. Now, I wanted the top of that field, the green field, to be darker. So you'll notice I just laid my stencil back down, added some more green ink, and then we're good to go. Now, the next portion that I'm going to ink in is the tree line back there over those rolling hills. I'm making sure I get everything lined up nicely. And then I'm gonna take my brush that has rustic wilderness, which is a really deep, beautiful green. And I am going to have the darkest part of the tree line on the bottom. So you'll notice I'm starting it down there below that tree line and then flicking the bristles of that brush up to add the green on. And then I'm gonna add on some different colors here. And now this is something I love to do, especially in the fall because we have so many beautiful fall colors. We can mix in oranges and yellows and browns and just make a beautiful fall scene. Okay, you noticed again, I, I like to do that a lot. I love to pick up the stencils and kind of look to see where I want to add more shading to see if I've got it dark enough. And then when I get it the way I like it, I can kind of move on with different colors. Next, I'm going to take scattered straw and my scattered straw brush that I have. And you'll notice that I'm not going over every area. I'm kind of hitting areas here and there where I want a little bit of that scattered straw ink. And then there we go. We're all done with that one. Next, I'm going to take the orange, which is crackling campfire. It's a really deep, beautiful burnt orange, perfect for the fall. And we're going to blend these colors together. And you're starting to see kind of that fall color scheme kind of come into play in the tree line back there. I'm going to do the same with the leaves and things on our tree, but we'll do that here in a few minutes. Now this is that gathered twigs brush again, and I'm almost gonna go over that entire tree line area. And what this does is it just adds a little bit of that gathered twigs color. I did not ink my brush up again, and so it wasn't just really super juicy. It was a way for me to almost blend the orange and the yellow and the green together, add a little bit of richness from that gathered twigs. And then all I'm going to do now, as you can see, I've slipped in a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to hit right on the edge of that die cut because, you know, when we cut our paper and we're left with um, 
whatever the paper is underneath. So we're left with a white edge or a black edge or whatever. So I'm just hitting the edges of that with my brushes. That way I don't have, you know, a stark white edge there on the tops of that tree line. And I'll do the same thing with the leaves of the tree um, and the tree top here in just a few minutes. Okay, in the plowed field portion of the, the scene here, you'll notice that I had a little white spot where I didn't really get down in there with the brown. That's the beauty of these stencils is you could just relay that over the top and hit that little corner or any little pieces that you may not have liked. You can kind of blend in colors, add portions in where you may have missed a spot, so it makes it super easy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove that scrap of white paper and I am going to get busy ink blending our treetop now. Now, these, uh, this stencil in particular, there are loose limbs of the tree. So you'll notice when I ink blend this, I'm going to be really careful with my brush to go in the same direction as those tree limbs. And this is going to make it one so the stencil stays in place. It's also going to help not tear or rip or kind of twist the stencil around. So I've got my rustic wilderness brush again that I'm going to add right in there to the base of the tree or up next to the tree limbs and to the trunk of the tree. And I'm very gently just brushing that color on. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to make this a fall color tree with color, uh, fall colored leaves. And so I'm going to mix in the yellows and the oranges and things like that to make it a really beautiful tree. So I'm going in with uh, scattered straw and fossilized amber again, both. The scattered straw is a very light yellow and fossilized amber is a little bit deeper of that kind of mustardy color yellow. So I'm going in with the crackling campfire now and there's like no rhyme or reason to this. This is why I love ink blending in the fall. It's because you can kind of just blend and have fun. And if you don't like something, if you don't like an area that you've colored in, you can just add another color and make it darker or make portions light. And so it's really fun. I really enjoy ink blending, especially uh, die cuts and things in the fall because I can just blend everything together and have and have fun. And if the colors get a little bit muddy, you know, like they do sometimes when maybe we've mixed the wrong color together, no big deal because in the fall, everything just blends together and we've got greens and browns and yellows and oranges. So it makes it a lot of fun to, um, to use stencils and our blending brushes and inks and blend on to our die cuts and to do scenes like this. Okay, I'm going back in with my Rustic Wilderness uh, brush and just kind of hitting along the edges and blending everything together. And now I've got that all finished and I am going to finish up this background or this scene with some colored pencils. Now I mentioned before that when you die cut with the cover plate, you're going to get all of the great details embossed into the paper. So here are my colored pencils. I'm going to pick some out that kind of go and blend in with our scene, but I simply trace over the embossed lines that are already pressed into the paper. So it's kind of like cheating and it makes adding details into the background and into our die cuts very easy. And you'll notice as I add this kind of olive green colored pencil into uh, the little grasses and things that are impressed into the paper that that scene and everything is just going to start to pop with color and with detail. So I'm just going along all those little grasses. You don't have to hit every single one. I think I do on this bottom portion just because those little grasses and things are a little bit more sporadic uh, throughout the design. But you'll notice up there in the tree leaves. Now there's lots of detail pressed into that and I'm not going to go over a little every single line of that. But I'm taking that same green pencil and going over the top of some of those 
embossed lines and it just makes the treetop there and all those little leaves and all of our details just really pop out where is sometimes when you ink blend and things some of those little details can kind of get lost back there so just simply cheating and adding colored pencil you can use your copic markers or whatever you want to use it's really going to make those details really pop out of our scene i'm going to take a really deep dark chocolate brown pencil and hit the little lines that are in what I'm calling like a plowed field, like it's dirt turned up by a tractor or something like that, like it's ready to be planted. So I've added in the little lines for that. And now I'm going to take a really light brown pencil and go over the lines that are in kind of that golden yellow uh, crop or field that we have back there. Maybe it's wheat or maybe it's a corn field or something like that. But I'm going to go right down those lines that are pressed into the paper and then I am going to blend right along the edge just adding some little flicks with the pencil and it looks like that dirt field and everything just kind of flows one into the other in our little rolling hills that we have back there. Okay so I've taken a piece of baby blue paper from my crafty stash and I'm using the stencil that has the clouds on it from that stencil set. I'm using our brilliant white opaque ink and a little finger dauber and I am blending on the clouds. Now this is a super easy way to create a sky, just cheating and using blue paper instead of feeling like you have to ink blend a whole sky or a whole background back there. Just use some uh, blue paper and that's cloud stencil that goes with um, the other stencils that we've already used and you'll see now we have a beautiful cloudy sky and once I lay our ink blended uh, background over the top the whole scene is just going to come together now anytime I use an opaque ink or a dye ink like that that's really juicy you want to heat set that to make sure that it is really nice and dry so you know you don't spread that ink around or I don't get my fingers in it I'm going to add some liquid adhesive to the back of our farmhouse fields scene and I love to use liquid adhesive because it's going to give me a little time to shimmy everything around to make sure that I have it in just the place I want it to go. Now you're seeing that uh, scene all come together here. We've got the blue sky, we've got those beautiful puffy clouds, and then all of the fall colors that are in our little countryside scene. Now once this is all stuck down nicely, that's where I'm going to take my paper trimmer and now I'm going to trim everything square. You'll notice those wonky corners there. That's okay. We're just going to trim this all down so it fits onto our card. Now I'm going to do a six by six inch square card for this because I love these scenes so much. I don't have the heart to cut them down to A2 size for it to be a smaller card. So I'm leaving that whole scene and I'm just going to do a big, nice square card. As I mentioned before, I'm cutting this square. So the finished um, cut down is going to be about uh, five and a half by five and a half. And then we'll add that on to a six by six inch card. So once I get everything the way I want it, I'll trim down this last side and then it's ready to add to our card base. We have a couple of different sentiment sets that are great to go with anything really, but especially the farm feel of this card. So this stamp set is called It Is Well. It has lots of great sentiments like country roads, take me home, and praying for you. I love you to the barn and back, which is going to go perfect with those little on the farm dies. But because we're doing this is just kind of a fun scene card, I'm going to use this sentiment set that is called Heartfelt Hello. And I am going to use the sentiment that says, um, to my cherished friend, I almost forgot there, to my cherished friend on the front, and then on the inside of my card, I'm going to add with heartfelt 
thanks. And so it's just a fun little fall themed thank you card. Now this die or this sentiment set does have coordinating dies, so I can cut out my stamp sentiments and add these anywhere onto my cards. I'm going to stamp that to my cherished friend that I mentioned before and I almost forgot. I'm going to stamp that onto craft cardstock. You can see I've just got a scrap piece there and I'm stamping it in the gathered twigs ink because I like to kind of coordinate all of my colors, have everything kind of blend and flow together. And so I'm stamping that in the gathered twigs ink. You'll notice that I stamped that several times to get it nice and crisp and dark. I let my sentiment dry because oxide inks do take just a minute to dry. I can tape down my coordinating die and then I'm going to die cut this little sentiment. Now this is my card base and so I mentioned I'm going to do a large square size card. I can use my bone folder and get a nice score line that, with that and then press that down and then I've got a really nice base for that pretty fall scene to go on to. I'm gonna glue down my scene with my liquid adhesive, that way I can get it in just the right spot. But before I do that, I want to open up my card and this is where I'm gonna stamp that inside little sentiment. I love to add just little surprises, little messages on the inside. And so I'm gonna add with heartfelt thanks and then I can pull out this card when it's all finished and use this as a nice little thank you card for something. So I'm making sure it's all lined up. And then again, I'm going to use the exact same gathered twigs ink. That way everything coordinates. The inside coordinates with the outside and it coordinates with the uh, fall scene that I have going on. And now the inside of my card is all ready to go. Okay, now I'm ready to add that beautiful scene onto the front of my craft cardstock. I'm just going to use liquid adhesive. That way I can shimmy it all in place and make sure my borders are all lined up around the edges. And I'm really going to press that down to make sure the liquid adhesive has time to do its job. And then I can add my to my cherished friend sentiment. I like to pop up my sentiments sometimes with these really narrow foam strips. So I'm going to add those to the back and then I'll release the little pieces of backer paper and then we'll get that all tucked down into our scene. I love to use my reverse tweezers to kind of remove my hands and get those out of the way. And then, sorry about my head in the way, I tried to get way over the top so I can make sure it was nicely lined up. But I just tuck those little, the little sentiment on there. It gives it a little bit of dimension. And then when we open it up for in the inside, we have with heartfelt things. Now this has been so fun to put together and I love to create scenes, maybe use these dies where they're made Made to have little die cuts and things like that go on top of it, it makes a beautiful card just using the scene and adding a sentiment to it. Thank you for joining me today for this World Card Making Day fun crafty time. I hope you've enjoyed it and I thank you to Scrapbooking Cards today for having me. Talk to you all soon. Bye bye.